Good afternoon. My name is Amit Mittal, and I'm a special assistant to the president and senior director in the National Security Council. And I'm focused on cybersecurity and emerging technologies. Digital identity has become a core part of our daily lives. We log into a video call, we do online shopping, we securely authenticate ourselves into our bank account or file taxes, pay bills. For most of us, this means touching one or more aspects of digital identity. I'm excited to chat with you about the challenges and opportunities in front of us. Because it's at the core of so much of our digital self, identity is critical. And because so much of it is built on infrastructure, including the internet, which doesn't have strong identity provisions built in, it is fragile and it is complicated. Today, when we authenticate ourselves, identify ourselves, we might use one of a dozens of popular systems. So the ecosystem itself is very decentralized and is very unharmonized. It is also fundamentally unsecure. We now have environments that are rife with rampant fraud and criminal activity. Improving digital identity will go a long way in addressing these vulnerabilities while making our online activities more convenient, safer, and more reliable. Think about the way mobile phones have changed our lives and have brought amazing levels of convenience and efficiency to our daily lives. Through the appification of everything, groceries, car rides, bank accounts, social media, travel, there's an app for everything and it's convenient, it's accessible, and it's trustworthy. And yet, when these experiences meet the real world, the physical world, the experience is really jarring. It's rampant with friction and opportunities for fraud. And a lot of that is because our real world our real world identities, they don't translate really well into online world. And the lack of a strong digital identity, trustworthy, convenient, reliable, that amplifies the friction. How do I take my physical identity, typically my driver's license, and translate it easily and conveniently into the digital world? How do I do it in a way that is durable? How do I do it in a way that's under my control with the right privacy settings? How do I make sure that only the right authorized people get access to my personal information and for only the, the duration that is actually required? How do I revoke access? Today, when I show someone my driver's license, let's say to prove that I'm old enough to, to buy alcohol, because that, those days are, are long gone, but why do they need to know my address? Why do, they, why do they need to know my exact date of birth? So digital identity that reveals only the information that is required and only for the duration that is required is an incredibly important element of authenticating and identifying yourself online. All these scenarios I mentioned here have a few things in common. Many of them involve digital payments and commerce. Many happen remotely and entirely on the internet. Because of this, these scenarios are also great targets for crime. And so we need strong remote identity solutions that can provide easy, secure, affordable, and reliable ways to identify consumers and counterparts across digital systems. These scenarios will just continue to grow and become an even bigger part of our lives, not just our digital interactions. Existing solutions to security that incorporate part of the identity can make a big difference. One such example is multi-factor authentication. But com by combining a password or a biometric with a second factor, often, often an SMS text, security can be dramatically improved. A single compromise, let's say of your password or lost phone is not enough to put your accounts at risk. Incorporation of MFA, multi-factor authentication, into security solutions can, can go a long way towards reducing compromises and fundamentally improving security. The US government can play a, a number of roles in the identity ecosystem. 
such as, number one, creator of standards, and in particular, defining what constitutes a legally acceptable digital ID. This includes work that NIST has already done and that DHS is actively engaged in. Number two, the US government can be a regulator of identity expectations for industry consistent with standards and promoter of responsible innovation. Number three, it can be an issuer of government identity credentials, such as passports and other documents, and also a maintainer of certain authoritative government-managed identity databases and services, include, including those that verify attributes. Finally, the government can be a consumer of digital identity solutions. In the provision of government services, in fulfillment of United States government missions, and to drive development of a competitive marketplace. And so the US government has a varied and diverse way of participating in the digital identity ecosystem. It's clear that there are diverse and large number of scenarios that need digital identity. There is no single entity that, that can solve all these scenarios or can, that can create the required infrastructure to support them. We need an ecosystem of we need an ecosystem that brings together the best ideas and innovation from the private sector. This is both large companies and startups, as well as with the government at both the federal and at the state, the local, tribal, and territorial levels. Different entities have varying roles to play in creating credentials, in proofing them, in verifying documents, to creating exciting applications that enable the use cases that dramatically improve additional experiences. We have an incredible opportunity to create an ecosystem that brings equitable, affordable access to the best of our digital economy. The innovation that is already happening is inspiring and very encouraging. The next few years will unlock a new set of capabilities that will enable unprecedented security, access, and convenience for all of us across the government and also for citizens across our nation. Thank you, and I look forward to joining you for the rest of the conference.